Hey everybody, uh, we've got a match here using six corners against this uh, T-Tar Dragons deck, and um, yeah, uh, hope you all had a great holiday. Uh, I know I did, and I start off. Uh, I opened Cobalion, so I'm just gonna go for the Sage. I'm grabbing the Collector here and the Grass, I think, because uh, in most cases. The best play is to try and get a Pharisian set up early so you can start accelerating your deck and hopefully you leave Walla for a couple of early prizes. I attach the DC because I know next turn I'm probably going to want to retreat the Cobalion and then just pass it over to them. And uh, all they've got on the board is a Cleffa, so there's nothing too threatening at the moment. Um, he just goes for the Eek, so that's good for us. That's just basically a turn passed. So we still have another turn to try and get things going. Grab a Verizian. Gotta grab a Shaman just to hold. And since I don't know what they're playing yet, I grab a Kirin because it seems like the best thing to go for in this situation. I'm not going to drop it down yet just because I don't know if I'll need it or not, but I didn't want to waste the Collector. So I retreat into Verizian, touch an Eevee Light, and uh, I think about dropping the Kirin, but then I realize I shouldn't do that yet. I just go for the double draw and we get more cards in hand which is always good and they end up staying asleep drops a hound hour and i'm kind of like what what's going on here uh but they collect her for a restroom and two larvitars and i'm like why would they run those two together but then if you think about it tyranitar has an attack called darkness how that puts 20 damage on every pokemon on play that's not dark so not only is he doing damage to my Pokemon, but he's going to put damage on his dragons, which means that he can set up an Outrage. So it's not the worst thing ever. It's actually kind of impressive. Uh, he goes for a switch, and then actually just retreats back into Cleffa, because I guess he really wants a new hand, and that's an acceptable play. So uh, the, he goes for the Eek, and right now, now that I see he's got Larvitars, which are weak to water, and a Reshiram, uh, I feel like the best play is to actually use Kyurem in this matchup, so I drop it down, use the other Eviolite, attach a water, and because Clef is asleep, uh, yeah, there's no reason to go for the Leaf Wallop yet, so I just go for a double draw, accelerate some more, and um, he wakes up finally, he drops down a Zekrom, which makes me believe even more that that's his strategy with this deck, is to set up dragons with the Tyranitar and Darkness Howl so we can get damage on my guys and go for the Outrages with his dragons. Which is pretty intimidating. He evolves into Pupitar, evolves into Tyranitar, and then evolves into Houndoom. So that was a really good eat for him. And I'm actually kind of scared here because I have all these huge guys that I have to try and take down. And as you may know, it's not easy to take down a bunch of huge guys with uh, stuff like this. Because these Pokemon usually want to take advantage of taking free mm -hmm. prizes. So I attach an energy here because I know I'm probably going to go for the Leaf Wallop. Um, I think about it thinking, is there anything I want to catch her out and do 42, but there's honestly nothing that 40 is going to do a lot to, so my best play here is just to go for a 40 on the Clef, uh, take it out, and then next turn I can do 80, because Leaf Wallop uh, allows you to do 80 the following turn, if you use Leaf Wallop during the previous turn. So he goes for a plus power and goes for Outrage, it does 40 because of the Eviolite, on PTCGO, it actually heals 20, which is interesting, and at the same time, kind of bad, because if a Pokemon only does 10 to you, you're still going to get 20 heal off you, which is not balanced, in my opinion. I go for the, I end up going for the Catcher on the Tyranitar rather than the Pupitar, because I know I can two-shot it, and because it has energy on, on it, I feel like it's the hugest threat. In a deck that has no acceleration, you always want to get rid of the energy, if there's no huger threat on board, because once they're out of energy, they have really nothing to do. I end up collecting because I want to waste it. I attach a rainbow, but he ends up lost removing it, which is really bad. That puts me back in energy attachment, which kind of sucks, but I think we'll live. Uh, he uses a switch again, attaches energy to a Houndoom, and then goes for an Outrage again. Uh, so, luckily I have another catcher, so my plan here is just to... Um, catch her out that Tyranitar and finish it off and that'll be a big weight off my shoulders but there's still a couple things that are that I'm kinda weary about that restroom's still kind of a problem because it can keep outraging my Verizian which is weak to fire and that Houndoom seems like kind of a threat uh, 
that's also why I didn't drop down the Terrakion, because his attacks is if you have a fighting Pokemon in play, it does more damage, which is like, that's random, but okay. Also, um, just in general, don't recklessly drop down your Terrakion in, in any matchup whatsoever, because it becomes ca a catcher target, and the best way to use Terrakion is out of nowhere when your opponent doesn't expect it. So if you combo it with Shaman, you can theoretically set it up in one turn. So that's my plan here. Uh, he takes out the Verizium, which kind of sucks, but I'm going to bring out the Curum. And I look at my hand. There's nothing really there that I want to use, per se. So I think I'm going to end up just dropping down the Verizium, because it's going to be useful to just have a decent... Just to have as a basic on the board, and as something to go into when I need to. And... So, I end up dropping down the Verizium, and there's nothing else in my hand I really want to use. Actually, I end up going for the Super Rod because I want to get that Shaman back and those energies. It gives me a higher percent, higher chance of uh, drawing into a Shaman after I go for the Pawn, which is pretty important because Shaman's going to be key later in the matchup. I go for the Pawn, and I get a decent hand. So my only move here really is just to go for the Outrage. With an Eevee Light, uh, the thing I'm looking for here is for the Houndoom to attack enemies so that I can revenge kill. Uh, that's one of the main strategies with this deck is you run a lot of Outrage Dragons so you want them to attack into you so you can revenge kill with Outrages and that works out perfectly here because now I can kill either the Houndoom or I look at my hand and I've got a catcher so this is a great opportunity to just erase that Reshiram from the face of this world because that's going to be a big threat if I don't get rid of it now uh, especially with the weakness and all this will be able to one shot and that's great. I go for the pawn uh, because I don't want to waste Juniper and lose out on a resource I don't need to lose out on. I get a pretty solid six card. They get two Shamans and a Terrakion. I needed a Shaman and a Terrakion, that's perfect. I attach a DC to the Cobalt Line because I don't want to lose out on energy attachments and with Shaman it's not really going to matter. I get a second Terrakion which is even more hilarious. And at this point, he's starting to charge up his Tyranitar, but I'm okay with that because I know I can revenge kill it with Terrakion if everything goes properly. I just got a Terrakion here because I know I'm not going to need two of them, and theoretically if I did need to, I still always have super rods that I can junk arm for, and so I Sage here and grab a junk arm just in case, and I grab the Catcher, since I don't really need the Seeker that much, and I don't really need Pont that badly either, so those seem like the two best cards to grab. I look at my discard pile just to make sure, and yeah, those are the two cards that I want. Uh, then, even though I'm going to kill myself by attacking into the Houndoom, I really just need to get rid of it. It's starting to become a pain in the butt, and it has energy on it, so that's going to get rid of a lot of resources on their side of the field. Yes, I lose that on my Pokemon, but right here, I know he's probably going to go into the, the Tyranitar, so I'm going to bring out the Verizium just as Death Fodder. That way I can revenge kill with Terrakion if all goes properly. I do need to get a Fighting or Rainbow though, so that's an issue. But I do have an Energy on Cobalt and then I can shift over to the Terrakion. So that is my plan of attack. So I bring in Terrakion. Uh, luckily I've got Switch just in case that didn't work out, but I top deck the Rainbow like a boss. I go for the Energy, the Celebration Wind, and switch the Energy to Terrakion. So now we're set. I end up going for Pawn here, which I didn't really need to do. But I just wanted to be safe and make sure I'd have the fighting energy because next turn, after I kill this uh, Tyranitar, I want to have another energy so that I can for sure kill the Zekrom for my last prize. So that's, that all works out fine. And at this point, I feel like I have the game in the bag. I've got energies on energies. I've got a switch just in case he tries to do something funny. And here he drops down a Tyro, goes for plus power, attaching to energy. And then he cheats. He does the glitch where you can discard one energy for junk arm to use a switch to switch into his uh, Tyrogue and try and stall me out, but that's not going to work as you can see because I draw into the Junk Arm which I can use to get a Catcher, so I'm going to attach an Energy, Junk Arm for the Catcher, and that is going to be the game, so yeah. Definitely a great game, I would not say I'm a very good Six Corners player, um, I get the Healer as a as an achievement here, which is funny because I never actually healed, but because of the glitch on the Eevee Light, that's how it works out. Uh, six Corners is a pretty hard deck to play in my opinion. 
I wouldn't say that I'm one of the greatest players ever, but I felt like I played that matchup decently. Uh, check out the last match if you haven't already. There are some cities matches coming, uh, thanks to somebody that is going to be lending us the videos. They're also going to be on their channel, which is called Green Star Gaming. I'll put a link in the description so you should check them out. And uh, also check out the Top Cut. Uh, they're going to be doing some uh, videos from the Florida Marathon, which is like one of the best marathons around. And there's going to have it's going to have great players such as Sammy Sakum, uh, Kyle Sukovic, Jason Klasinski. So definitely check that out. Uh, subscribe to us if you have not. Check out our Facebook fan page and our Twitter, and catch you guys later.